Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the first set between C Reeling and 815, part of a best of three. Whoever wins this goes on to play Quanro, and that will be the end, whoever wins that match, the end of the round of 36 for Group C. Um, so basically, C Reeling versus 815, winner advances to play Quanro, and then from there uh, you have the next match. It's cr sponsored by Korean Air this time, by the way. Someone I've, I'm actually very familiar with. My dad's actually fun with them a couple times. I got really cool little... Um, playing cards. I'm not even sure what they are. They're almost like Mahjong playing cards, so uh, maybe someone can tell me what those actually are in the future. Anyway, sorry I'm not live casting this, but I am currently downloading the StarCraft 2 beta and I might not be doing as many games in the future, and I know I haven't been doing a ton to begin with, but what I'll be trying to do instead is live casting uh, matches for StarCraft 2. Already we have Psionic Reaver who's casting them. You can check him out on JustDone.tv and at large I'll try to basically cast as many games as possible for you guys. I don't plan to be... Uh, I, I'm really the way I feel 8 o'clock position by the way we have C really. It's been a really shining spot for Eastro. I still don't feel like he's a fantastic player. 8.15 I've been waiting for him to kind of make it through to a sweet 16 of either league for quite some time now and he's really been stopped short. Uh, he's an excellent Zerg player, and I think he's been really undervalued and really just... I'm not sure what's been stopping him from getting all that far in either league. I think he is a top four contender if he's playing at his best. I think he's still developing as a player. Really strong macro, really smart guy overall. Both him and Haran, I feel like, are two guys that haven't lived up their potential just yet, and I'm hoping to see that in the very near future. Anyway, point being, um, I don't expect I'm going to be all that talented at StarCraft II, considering I barely have time to play what I'm currently playing, so I just don't think I'm going to be able to put in the time to get very good at it. And StarCraft, if it's anything like the original, you've got to really dedicate a lot of time, and that's how you end up getting very good at something. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't have that time to spend, but I will try to cast and get a baseline for it so I can commentate for you guys. Um, I might try to commentate Psionics matches while he's playing, uh, try to get some sort of matches. I know he played David Kim um, here and there. Maybe try to put some of those up on YouTube preemptively once I have a better idea of what's going on in the matches also try to get you guys a little bit more informed about builds and things as best as I can, or at least some general information, what limited information I can. And right off the bat, looks like we've already got that drone harassing, um, and I think we're seeing a 12 hatch otherwise, or there's another drone just going out to be absolutely annoying. It looks like we are, in fact, seeing... Um, this is odd. 815 sending another drone out in the field. Is he, in fact, going to go for the proxy hatch? This would be incredible. There hasn't been a proxy hatchery in a match since, who is it, Freedom versus Oversky, Oversky being my absolute hero and longtime favorite Zerg for that build. Um, this this could be really, really crazy. By the way, this is on a new map. It's called uh, Great Barrier Reef. I'm actually not very familiar with kind of the look, kind of the, the, the look of it um, or the feel of it. I don't know how balanced it's going to be. But yeah, two drones on the front door. I've got to assume proxy hatch reaction. They hid underneath. No, never mind. He's going to... This... Oh, wow. This is absolutely crazy strategy. This is incredible creativity from 815. He's going to sneak a drone out, put a hatchery, I think, behind um, to that north, to that 9 o'clock position, so, and then build sunken colonies behind that mineral line, which is a natural expansion for C, really, which is absolutely hilarious. But what he needs to do um, to follow this up is he needs to create as much delay as possible for scouting it. Well, he needs to kill scouting SCVs. And there you see that command center out. But yeah, I'm kind of curious if he'll actually be able to pull this off. So third hatchery is in play. He needs to kill that SCV rather rapidly. And he needs to make sure additional scouts aren't fielded any place. And it looks like no gas being planted. So we aren't seeing any sort of mech build. We're also seeing a little bit lighter tech. Basically what this means is because we're not seeing that gas planted, really is not going to have any sort of tech to deal with a sunken colony rush at his natural expansion. He might have marines, but he's not going to be able to deal with the sunken colony's heads up is what kind of the, the factor here and what's really important by the about him not taking the gas right there. He's not going to have range. He can have as many marines as he wants. He's not going to be able to push them in there to, to stop that. And he's really, if he's going to really, really, if he's going to be able to do anything about this, he needs to get mining that corner edge mineral as quickly as possible. And this could be an incredible two-pronged attack. If he sends in some Zerglings to support across that uh, with those sunken colonies, really is just going to get absolutely blown away at his own natural secondary, which is going to be absolutely hilarious. I I really like the strategy from 815. Granted, yes, it is cheesy, and yeah, it's not heads up, but I think 815 can beat really heads up, and I 
I, I like him doing this at the early stages of the match. I like him mixing it up. It almost reminds me of the days of silver. And the the next question is, is also, will really be able to spot that creep as it starts intruding in and how will react? So that first SCV on the corner, I hope we get the first person view. We're going to be able to see right now, and this is one of those times I actually appreciate the first person view. As you can see, that corner mineral isn't being mined out and he's not seeing that creep on that top corner. It doesn't really, it does show up purple, but keep in mind his color is purple. So he might just be thrown off. Okay, now he sees the creep. He's got to know now he's trying to mine that one corner, bringing those Marines over, getting a bunker at his main. He knows he's going to need it, but uh, it, I honestly think it, no, oh, it looks like he was able to sneak one Marine through, but two Zerglings are there to deal with the single Marine that flooded through, and that Marine is now trapped. It's going to die to those two Zerglings. Beautifully executed by 815, and it looks like that mineral patch is going to stand. The creep colonies are going to be able to intrude forward, and really is going to end up losing his natural expansion. Honestly, I think his best bet right here would be to lift everything he has, take all of his Marines, all his SCVs, and just go in for an attack at 815's main instead of trying to flood through these uh, individual Marines and uh, play from there. And it looks like the Sultan Colony is now in range to deny a lot. Uh, he's worried about his entire front getting taken out, but a, a Creep Colony well-placed uh, directly hugging that mineral line, and he's going to completely take out that command center and everything else and really isn't going to be able to do a lot about it. And it looks like there is a single... I like that, 815 covering himself just in case there was a rush of that sort he has that single sunken colony up and if he saw all of those units flooding off he would be able to put down additional sunken colonies to stop that rush so I think, yeah, he's definitely got this match sealed. He's still denying, it looks like, just a little bit left on that mineral field. But even if he does open it up, I don't think those medic marines and those fire bats are going to be able to take those creep colonies off unless they push in with SEVs as well. It looks like really just signs like, whew, managed to get it open. But he's going to need, well, actually, he might be able to push against this, but that's three creep, three creep colonies. He's going to need uh, an additional, if that fourth, uh, if that additional creep colony, he looks like he is going to be able to run in. Two Zerglings right there. Let's see if the fire bats, the fire bats need to get concentrated down. One fire bat down. And see if that second fire bat gets taken out and more creep colonies morphing and it looks like really is going to be able to knock this uh, knock these sunken colonies down let's see if a lot of zerglings will be able to swing around and clean the rest of this up but unfortunately for 815 clever strategy but it looks what he really needed to do is yeah just concentrate and take that out it looks like some mutilus is going to be following this up but a lot of overlords spawning right there and the overlords very rapidly getting taken out that was a really bad location for overlords to, to spawn and that is that's 300 minerals first of all and a lot of supply so now really way way ahead in this match just wasn't able to stop that SCV on the corner. I thought he was going to be able to, and I thought he, I think he was cheating a little bit on that additional creep colony. I think he could have gotten that down a little bit sooner if he had just placed that third one a little bit sooner. I'm not sure why. Uh, I know that, hey, you know, you don't want to build as many drones or you want to save minerals to the last second, but in that circumstance, I think it was worthwhile just to do it, but still really has lost um, a lot of SCVs. His mining's been somewhat